something truly momentous happened in the 19th century, something which changed every aspect of life on the planet, something which unleashed wonderful and terrible powers. If you look at any metric of human activity, from population to economic, scientific, artistic, or literary output over time, it is hard to miss the inflection point one observes in the 19th century. Every aspect of human society was upended, from race, class, and gender roles to political structures. These powers have allowed humans to touch another world, and yet are capable of driving the next mass extinction or ending life as we know it. These events were followed in the 20th century by the most terrible conflict humans have ever witnessed. Over two world wars, nations fought battles raging across the globe culminating in the horrors of the Holocaust and the atomic bombs dropped on Japan. Many living during World War I viewed it in apocalyptic terms, calling it the war to end all wars. As if to echo this sentiment, one of the final battles of World War I occurred on the very plane described in Revelations. In September of 1918, the Battle of Megiddo was fought. It was the climactic conflict of the Sinai and Palestine campaign, where German and Ottoman forces were encircled by the British and French under the command of General Allenby. We are taught that this change in the world was a natural product of the industrial and scientific revolution, that the confluence of banking, industry, and the sustained and effective use of the scientific method reached a tipping point, driving a dramatic explosion of technology. Yet, outside of secular thought, today most major religions have struggled and for the most part failed to grapple with these changes. Curiously though, all of the great religions foreshadow an important and convulsive event for humanity. The Sanskrit scriptures speak of the end of the Kali Yuga and the appearance of the 10th avatar. Buddhism, which grew out of Hinduism, await the coming fifth Buddha. Zoroastrians await the coming of Shah Brahman, and Muslims like Jews and Christians await the Messiah and the Day of Judgment. But what is little known is that in the late 18th and early 19th century, this expectation grew very acute when a renaissance of messianic expectations erupted all over the Christian and Islamic world. In the Christian world, these expectations were known as the Second Great Awakening. Many Christians were awaiting a great change in human affairs. A large number of them were convinced that this would occur around the middle of the 19th century. In 1818, William Miller, a lay Baptist minister from Massachusetts, after careful study of the book of Daniel in the Bible, had determined that by about 1844, all the affairs of our present state would be wound up. A similar sort of expectation even led a group of Protestant Germans, known as the Templars, to move to Haifa in present-day Israel in 1868 to await the descent of Christ. Of course, when they did not observe him physically descend from the heavens as expected, most abandoned these beliefs. And this event, to this day, is known as the Great Disappointment. However, 
Remnants of the effects of this expectation remain to this day in churches and religions like the Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witnesses, and the Mormon Church. And yet, with each step in the explosive growth in scientific and technological knowledge, serious doubt was created in the nature of the traditional religious understandings of heaven, hell, angels, and even the origin of humans and the world. Thus, the events of the 19th century also coincided with the rise of a materialistic philosophy and the precipitous decline of religious belief. It saw the birth of more radical, materialistic philosophies like that of Marx and Nietzsche, as well as a more general rejection of God in all forms of religion. This decline of religious belief was not just due to the growth of scientific knowledge, but more importantly was due to this latent religious materialism which existed in all of these great religions. I believe that it is this materialism which took root in these religions centuries earlier, which is responsible for the hard split between science and religion, such that many view today science and religion as being completely mutually exclusive, or at the very least belonging to completely different spheres of knowledge. Many religions today deal with this problem by simply avoiding the intersection of both, or relying on faith to explain away the many difficult logical and physical problems which their understanding of scripture presents. The fruit of this is that religion, in particular traditional theism, appears to be in full retreat in the broader culture. In my experience, the attacks on theism have grown in the nature of their viciousness, ridicule, and derision. Any hint of theism is cast as some sort of anti-science, tyrannical delusion and rejected without any consideration. On the other side are those who still hold to a literalist, traditional belief. While dwindling, they are now more trenchant in their rejection of science and intellectualism than ever. This tendency to dismiss scientific consensus on the part of large segments of the population is given force by the break between science and religion, and in my opinion, represents a profound challenge for the very viability of our species on this planet. To be sure, there are also many traditional theists who do accept the rationality and authority of modern science, yet their voices seem dimmer and arguments for belief vaguer, and at times the science appears to strain against their stance. This is primarily due to their implicit insistence on what really amounts to a materialistic philosophy of religion, that is, that the clear idealism presented in scripture should be understood in gross material terms. Idealism is a very ancient philosophy with both Western and Eastern forms. Its history is lost in the haze of mythology. The core premise is that the material existence is ultimately founded upon mind or consciousness. The most popular and clearest expression of idealism in the West and Near Eastern traditions originated with Plato's theory of forms. The theory of forms claims that non-physical, idealized forms or ideas represent the most accurate reality and that physical objects represent a shadow of these forms. These forms are often described as models or templates from which imperfect copies or projections are made in the physical world. Music 
if we now go back to the origins of major religions, we can see the idealism at their core, and that the literalist, materialistic understandings of theology may not reflect the intent or meaning of the founders of these great faiths. Indeed, if both religion and science are understood through the lens of idealism, they become not only easily reconcilable, but complementary. That this is not widely understood is in large part why many of those who have rejected religion yet still recognize the idealism inherent in modern science have constructed a new sort of metaphysics. which in the end are really a reconstruction of the ancient idealism which has inhabited religion for the ages. For example, the popular simulation hypothesis or the techno-utopianism of Ray Kurzweil's singularity have offered up their own form of millennialism and eternal life served up on the platform of digital information and technology. And yet it doesn't take that much discernment to recognize that these are just a modern retelling of the ancient ideas of idealism. For example, that which contained in Plato's theory of forms. If you study this carefully, you'll see that they really come to identical conclusions. And in fact, in some cases, they represent a kind of primitive form of theism. What many people don't realize is that these questions were worked out millennia ago, and their solutions inhabit the bones of all of the major great religions, despite the fact that their bodies may have been ravaged by the philosophies of literalism and materialism. Through the following chapters, we will explore the concepts of idealism and how they are connected to the roots of most of the great religions. We will then examine the growing support for idealism in the natural sciences, exploring the history of modern physics from the 19th to the 20th century. This period witnessed a profound shift in our understanding of the nature of reality, with the birth of quantum mechanics, relativity, thermodynamics, and information theory. We will also examine some of the more recent developments in these fields and how there is a growing body of evidence which lends considerable support to idealism. We will then show how it might be possible to construct a conceptual bridge between the old great religious thought and natural sciences using the language of idealism. Finally, I will consider a more controversial idea where the concepts and theology of religion might be informed and enlightened by considering the discoveries and new ideas of modern physics, as well as the converse, that there might be some foreshadowing and guidance in more recent revelations.